So um, what we're going to go over today is the laws of exponent. We did most of this or um, a lot of this in the grade 11, and then we're going to add to it. Okay? Uh, so first thing that we're going to know about the laws of exponent is that the exponent um, or the expression is made of two parts. You have your base and you have your exponent. Okay? So we have the base and the exponent. So if I have, for example, 5 to the power of 4, what is my base? 5. What's my exponent? 4. How about the next one? So bracket negative 5 to the power of 4. What's my base? What's my exponent? Negative 5. Negative 5 is my base. And my exponent is 4. Next. My base is x. x, and my exponent is 3. three. How about for the next one? What's my base? What's my exponent? Um, 7 and negative 2. Mm -hmm. And my next one? Negative 5 and 3. Now, for this one, what do you guys think? Is it negative 5? Is this, does this look exactly the same as this? What's the difference? Brackets. The brackets, yeah. right? So this here, the brackets, is telling me that negative 5 is the base of the power 4, right? Because it's, it's putting it in bracket, mm -hmm. OK? For this one, there is no bracket. So the base, actually, technically speaking, only 5 is raised to the power of 3, not the negative, right? So in this case, my base is just 5. So this is the same thing as negative 1 times 5 to the power of 3, okay? But because 1 is an invisible number, I just write negative 5 to the power of 3, okay? So my base here is just 5, and my exponent is 3, okay? So when you're entering in the calculator, you have to be careful what you're entering in the calculator. Okay. If you enter now with a base of three, it's not going to make a difference. But let's say if I have this to the power of four, and this, sorry, and this to the power of four, can you find me the answer for both of them, please, on your calculator? I don't know why I'm writing it here and it's right here. So what's the answer for the one with the bracket? Oh, I have the one without the bracket. Okay, the one without the bracket? Uh, negative 625. Next, negative 625? Yeah. Okay. How about the one with the bracket? Okay, so you see the difference? Right? In this case, this is telling me that I'm multiplying negative 5 by negative 5 by negative 5 by negative 5. Okay? In this case, so this is telling me that I am multiplying negative 5 by negative 5 by negative 5 by negative 5. So negative and negative makes positive times negative is negative times negative is positive. Right? So I'm going to end up with a positive answer. This one, I have negative. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, okay? Because for this one, my base is just 5. Are you cool with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how about for this one? What's my base? What's my base for 3x to the power of 3? 3x. 3x, right? And then my exponent is 3. In this case, my base is whatever is inside the bracket. multiplication of the base and exponent number of times, okay? So what it means when I write 5 to the power of 4, it means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Right? But we don't write this anymore. We write 5 to the power of 4 because it's much, e much easier to write. Negative 5 to the negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Okay, that's what it means 
when I have the negative 5 in the bracket. If the exponent is not shown, its value is? So if I don't have an exponent, what's that exponent? So if I have x, what, what's the exponent on the x? 1. It's an invisible 1. Okay. I put these rules here for you. I don't know. It's, it's pretty hard to see. I don't think the exponent is here. The exponent is not here. Okay. Actually, yes, it is. 7 is equal to 7 to the power of 1, or x is equal to x to the power of 1. Mm -hmm. So there is an exponent of 1 on every whole number, right? So anything that does not have an exponent is actually to the power of 1, right? That's the same thing, right? Do you guys remember what happens when I'm multiplying... Uh, powers with the same base. What do you do to your? Um, you you remember the law? Exponents just get added. That's right. So you keep the base the same, and you add the exponent. Right? I add the exponent. So if you have the same base, and you're multiplying, you keep the base the same, and you add your exponent. Do you remember that rule? Okay. Do I have the same base for my next one? No. No. Can I make them the same base? Okay, let's look at this. 4x squared. Can I write 4x squared as, I'm just going to rewrite the first one. Can I write 4x squared as 2x all the way to the power of 2? Are they the same thing? So 4x squared and 2x all squared, are they the same thing? What is 2x squared? What does that mean? Write an expanded form for me. What does that mean? 2x times 2x. Good. So it's 2x times 2x. What's 2x times 2x? 4x. 4x squared. squared, right? Because the x and the x, they're gonna, they have an exponent of 1. If I add their exponent, it's squared. So is 2x all squared equal to 4x squared? Is 2x to the power of 2 mm -hmm. equal to 4x squared? Yes, because I just got the answer, didn't I? Okay. It's right here. It's right here. Look. Look. Okay, yeah. Right? So I can write 4x squared as 2x in bracket squared. It's the same thing. Right? We're going we're gonna to go back over the power to the power. Remember, look at this. Look at this. Eyes on me. 2x all squared, right? is basically you have that square here and then you can distribute that square into the bracket. We're going to talk about this at the bottom, right? So that's going to be 2 squared. Don't write this. That's going to be 2 squared and then x squared. What's 2 squared? 4x squared, right? So yes, 2x to the power of all to the power of 2 is the same thing as 4x squared, okay? Now, why did I have to do this? Why, do, why did I have to write 4x squared as an exponent? Do you see now, do I have the same base? Mm -hmm. What's my exponent for this 2x? One. One. So I have the same base, what do I do with the exponent? Uh -huh. ah. So I had to do extra step here to make them the same base. How about your division law? What do you do when I divide powers with the same base, I? 
subtract the exponent. Okay? Remember, you must have the same base. If you don't have the same base, you can't subtract. Right? So for a negative 6 to the power of 10 divided by negative 6 to the power of negative 2, do I have the same base? Yeah. yeah. So I keep the base. Don't change it. It stays negative 6 in bracket. And then I subtract my exponent. So 10 minus negative 2. What's 10 minus negative 2? Right? Because a negative and a negative is positive, so that's 10 plus 2. Are we okay with that? How would I simplify the next one? You're dividing, right? How would I divide the next one? You just do y five. Okay. So because I, the y five. And the y to the power of 5 and the y, they have the same base. Yeah. So what do I do with their exponent? Uh, subtract. So what's the exponent on that one, on that y? That's 1. 1, so okay. One. How about the 3 and the 6? Can I simplify the 3 and the 6? Yeah. What are they both divided by? 3. 3, right? So I can technically divide this by 3, that's going to give me 1. Divide this by 3, that's going to give me 2. Okay, so with my whole numbers, I can simplify my whole numbers. Okay, divide this by 3, that's going to give me 1. Divide this by 3, that's going to give me 2. I'm going to write this here. Why am I dividing by 3? That's a common factor. Now, what do I do with my other letter? So I'm going to have to make sure I have the same base, okay? So for x, I have x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 2. What does that give me? What do I do with my exponent when I'm dividing? Yeah, so x to the power of 2. And then y to the power of 5, take away 1. So that's 4. Okay, so let me just write what we are doing here. So for the first part, we just divided by 3. I wrote that. And then for the x, I did 4 take away 2. And for the y, I did 5 take away 1. Okay, and I ended up with this answer. Mm -hmm. The x at the bottom disappears? Yes, because, because what you're doing here is that you're taking the x, which is your base, and then you're subtracting. Okay. The reason for that, look at, look at, look here. I'm just gonna open a new page here. I have x over x two, right? So if I want to write this in expanded form, right? That expanded form is x times x times x times x, yeah? Mm -hmm. Divided by x times x. I just need your attention here for a minute, please. So if I want to actually simplify this, right, what I do, because I'm dividing, I cross the x's out. For each x, I can cross x from the bottom. One from the top, one from the bottom, right? I don't have anything left in the bottom, right? I only have x squared left in the top. So that's why my answer for this one is going to be x squared on the top, right? Because the top is the one that has more x's. Does that make sense? If I have y5, y5 over y, right? Again, y, 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 y over y. So what happens here is the y and the y, they're going to cancel, and I'll only be left with y to the power of 4 on in the numerator. Right? So that's why when I go back here, the x, 4 divided by x2 leaves me with x squared, and then the y5 over y1 leaves me with y4. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
I'm going to do this. Because if you wrote x at the bottom, then that would be wrong, because then you would get That would be, yep. Yeah. I'm just rewriting this in order. Now if I have power to the power, I what do I do to the to my exponent? I multiply them. So I will multiply okay so to multiply my exponent <coughs> that means I leave the base so that's going to be 3 and then I multiply my exponent so 4 times 5 which gives me 3 to the power of 20. And then for this one, negative x, 3 times 7, which gives me negative x to the power of 21. Are we okay with this? Then we have power of a product or quotient law, okay? So this is what I talked to you about previously, and I said we'll see that again today. Uh, we'll see that again in the bottom, in the next page. So to simplify a power of two or more items multiplied and or divided. So if I have multiplied and or divided, and I have a power, I distribute the exponent for each item being multiplied and or divided. Okay, so that exponent goes to every single term inside the bracket. Okay, so this, this is what's gonna happen. Can I have your attention on me, please? So this is negative three x to the power of four. Especially the numbers. A lot of people miss that, okay? Remember that each number has an exponent of 1. If you don't have an exponent, it's an exponent of 1. So basically, this is negative 3 to the power of 1. And I'm raising that negative 3 to the power of 1 to the power of 3 because it's in the bracket, right? This is in the bracket, so that means that power has to apply to it. Okay? So... I have power to the power. What do I do with the, with the exponent? Multiply. Multiply. So that means I have negative 3. I'm going to keep the negative 3 in brackets because it's already in bracket and it's a negative. Negatives are a, bit, are a bit tricky when it comes to exponent. So treat them careful. Okay? If they're in bracket, treat them in brackets. Okay? Now, I have a negative 3, 1, times 3, that gives me 3. So that's negative 3 to the power of 3. And then how about the x? x to the power of? 12. Because I have to multiply that 3 by the power of 4 as well. Okay? So that's x to the power of 12. If that was not a negative, I would not put it in bracket. Okay. okay? So uh, there's no need for it, right? Because if I write 3 cubed or 
three cube, right? There is no difference. You can try that on the calculator, it's not gonna be a difference. But if I write negative three cube, now the cube is not gonna make a difference. It's just if it's a if it's an even exponent. But this is a rule that I usually. Or if I write this, they're two, they're two different things. Okay. So let's distribute that. Let's write it as a, with no bracket outside. So what do I have to do with that exponent two? Into every single term inside that bracket, okay? So what would it be for the first one? What, tell me what do I need to write? Four squared. Four squared, do we agree on that? Do we agree that it's four squared? Yeah, because I have an exponent of 1, an invisible exponent of 1 here, and then 1 times 2 is 2. Yeah, 4 squared. Y10 over, over 6 squared. Mm -hmm. um, so that exponent on the outside got distributed to every single thing inside that bracket. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is going to be multiplied by the exponent of everything inside that bracket. Are we okay with that? Now, later, well, after I finish writing this, I can actually simplify if I want to, right? Because 4 squared is 16. Mm -hmm. Y10. Now, you don't have to do that step right here, but in real life, this is what you need to do. 6 squared is 36 and then x to the power of 4, right? And you can actually simplify this, but I'm not going to do that here because this is not what the question is asking. Okay. Are we okay with this? Yeah. Can I do the distributive property on something like this? Can I just basically do the distributive property on something like this? No. No. Why? It only works for multiplication and division. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if I have multiplication and division, I can distribute my exponent. <coughs> In this case, I can't distribute. I have to do the FOIL. I have to do x plus 1 times x plus 1, and I have to FOIL. Mm -hmm. All right? Be careful. <coughs> okay? What if it was a cube? What would you do if it's cube? Then you would write it three times, and then you foil, and then you foil again. So you do so you like... find your answer for the first two, and then... And then you multiply whatever answer you got here by the x uh, plus yeah. one. Yeah. <coughs> okay? All right, anything to the power of zero is one. one, right? No matter what it is, letter, number, even if you have like x plus one to the power of zero, that's still one, okay? Anything to the power of zero is one. So you see this? Because it's in bracket and everything inside the bracket to the power of zero, I don't even have to think about it. It's one. I don't have to do any math. Okay? This one as well, it's going to end up being to the power of zero, right? Because 2 times 4 is 8 times 0 is 0, right? So that's going to end up being one as well. Do you guys know why to the power of zero is one? Let me show you why. Let me show you why, okay? So, if you have this, what do you do? How do you simplify this? Okay. What do I do with my exponent when I'm divided? 
You subtract. Right? So that's going to be 5 minus 5, which gives you what? X to the power of? Zero. Zero. Right? Well, what do we know when I divide something by itself? What do I get? One. Anything you divide by itself is one. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I'm not going to use my exponent law, anything I divide by itself, right? Because I get x, 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 x over x, 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 right? I'm going to cancel everything and I'll be left with 1. But if I use the exponent law, it gets me x to the power of 0. So guess what? x to the power of 0 is equivalent to 1, right? And that's going to be no matter what your base is, if you're raising it to the power of 0, it's going to equal to 1. Because anything I divide by itself is 1. And I go to the negative exponent. Any base raised to a negative exponent is equal to the reciprocal of the base raised to the same positive exponent. What does the word reciprocal mean? Um, what's on the bottom? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. So reciprocal means it's the, it's the flip. So the bottom becomes the top, the top becomes the bottom. So it flips. Where do you see negative exponent in the next equation? So you have three, or the next expression. So you have three x to the power of negative four, y to the power of negative three, and z. So which one have a negative exponent? X and y. X and y, right? Now, eyes on me for a second. What's the base for x? What's the denominator for x? Right? So the denominator for x is 1. What's the denominator for y? 1. one. Okay? So I need to make this a reciprocal and raise it to the power of a positive exponent. Okay? Do I need to make this reciprocal? No. No. So I can write 3 as is. The x to the power of negative 4, I'm going to have to flip. So it becomes 1 over x to the power of positive 4. Okay, so reciprocal and make it positive. Expect. How about the y to the power of negative 3? So 1 over y to the power of 3. How about z? As is. As is. So I can leave my answer like this, but then... Which way would you think is looks better? 3z over x4 y cube or what you've seen on the top? Which one looks better? What you just wrote. What I just wrote. Okay. Now, how do I know to write it this way? Can I have your attention for a second? Okay. If you look at this, this is multiplication, right? When I'm multiplying fractions, I multiply my numerator. Right, so 3 times 1 is 3, times 1 is 3, times z, so that's 3z. And I multiply my denominator, which is basically x4, y cubed. Okay? Here's an easier way for me to see this. Or for you to see this. If you have something with all multiplication, with positive or negative exponent, you can bring the negative exponent to the opposite side, which means if the negative exponent is in the numerator, you can just make it into the denominator, okay? So that, that being said, I take this, right? I leave the 3, I leave the z because they're both positive, and I divide by 
bring the negative to the denominator, which makes it x to the power of 4, y to the power of 3. Okay? So if it's in the numerator and it has a negative exponent, I bring it to the denominator with a positive exponent. Yeah? Can you say that again, please? Yes. Say it again? Yeah. I'll say it right now. Okay? So in my expression, if there is anything with a negative exponent, I can change its location. So if it's in the numerator with a negative exponent, I can bring it down to the denominator and make it positive exponent. Okay? Lexi, Lexi's available. Lexi's absent today. I'm coming. Yeah. All right. Maya, does that work for the reverse? 